I'm Raina Morgan with iHealth2. We're talking with Dr. Ellie Rappaport, a very distinguished scientist, and he's talking to us about ATP, which is the energy in our body. And I understand, Dr. Rappaport, that you have developed peak ATP, which is a natural oral form of ATP. Could you tell us a little more about that? Yes, Lena. Uh, as, a, as we mentioned before, there are 15 receptors up till now, and I'm sure that there will be more being more discovered for ATP and four receptors for adenosine. And these receptors fulfill different functions. Now, the pharmaceutical companies are trying to produce synthetic agonist and antagonist. In other words, they try to synthesize synthetic molecules that would bind to the receptors and either activate them the way ATP or adenosine do or antagonize the activity of ATP or adenosine. Now, this is really a daunting task because the synthetic, these synthetic molecules need to be both specific and selective. In other words, they need to be specific to interact with specific receptors and selective. They need to be selective for that particular receptor and not interact with other receptors because the activities are global. And that is an impossible task and it's also a very, in my opinion, an unhealthy task that's not going to yield uh, uh, the results that we are expecting. Now, our approach has been to use the natural. natural, exactly, the natural agonist and antagonist, namely ATP and adenosine. And we have developed an oral formulation, which is an enteric formulation, namely it protects the ATP through the gastric passage, through the passage okay. through the stomach, uh, that has to be, uh, because of the acidity of the right. stomach, which is, has a pH of 1 to 2, That's true, yes. it, has to be, uh, it has to be protected. And then the uh, enteric uh, coating disintegrates in the small intestines, in the duodenum, which is the proximal part of the small intestines, the part that's next to the stomach, where absorption in, is very fast. Now, what happens with ATP is an enterically coated soft gel, and uh, the soft gel dissolves in the duodenum. The ATP is absorbed into the portal circulation, which takes the ATP, at that time it's already in the form of adenosine and inorganic phosphate, into the liver. Now, the ATP, the ATP in the form of adenosine and inorganic phosphate are incorporated into the liver ATP pools, and the liver ATP pools supply the adenosine precursor into red, for red blood cell ATP synthesis. Now, the expansion of red blood cell ATP synthesis yes. provides the ATP into the blood plasma it releases ATP in a non-hemolytic fashion. So you get an increase in the blood plasma compartment of ATP, and that is the major factor in regulating both blood flow and glycemic control. Now, if I were to tell you that there are two things that one, two take-home messages all out right. of all this, one would be that ATP stimulates blood flow, and the other would be that ATP regulates glycemic levels. And those are two huge indications because of what's involved with uh, both stimulation of blood flow and regulation of blood sugar. So for the average person, for the viewer who's just a, uh, not a scientist, they would need to know that that translates to better blood flow and better blood sugar, more regulated blood sugar, right. correct? Right. The ATP disposes the blood sugar out of the blood and mostly into skeletal muscle okay. and cardiac muscle. And that is very important and we'll discuss it later. 
Great. Now, another thing, another very important take home message that uh, I cannot really emphasize strongly enough is that all this is done without, in, without an increase in heart rate or oh, okay. af any effect on blood pressure. So it doesn't affect heart rate or blood pressure. Right. The ATP is not a stimulant. Very good. Well, thank you, Dr. Rappaport. We'll visit again on this very exciting subject all about energy.